Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you my process for creating a knotted fabric rose. Now the rose is very rustic. It looks very interesting with all this texture and dimension. And every time you make it, you'll create a different result. It's made with a series of knots where you knot your fabric and then you stitch it down accordingly. You can add some twists and turns to your fabric to give it even more dimension and more contrast. And that's what makes it so unique, because each time you make it, depending on the fabric, the intensity of the color of the fabric, as well as the edging of the fabric, you get a different look. And you can use ribbon just as easily as a strip of fabric. So here's my process. So here's the knotted rows, and I'm going to show this technique in class today. Here I created it on a block for a Stitcher Square project, and I'll link to that video below. But it's just an interesting textured rose, there's some dimension, and you get a lot of effects from it. You can make it, this is kind of an organic shape, but you can make it perfectly round, oval, square. It has a lot of possibilities, but what's most interesting is choosing the color of fabric or the pattern really makes it pop, stand out, and really become an element to your piece that's really interesting and intriguing. And it's a very simple process to make, it just takes a little patience. So now here are two other versions of the roses, and they each have a leaf with them. This one's completely done in neutrals, so it's just kind of muslin fabric and then just a neutral fabric. And I can use this in my work, and the beauty is I can make these ahead of time, have them in my stash, and use them as I like. And they also make very interesting pins for hats or, you know, for your lapel. And here's another one that I did with a muted pink fabric, and then I have this beautiful dark green fabric for the leaf. So the process is really simple. You take a long strip of fabric. This is about an inch and a half wide, and it's about 17 inches long. And I have just the end of the fabric here. I haven't even cut it off yet. Whatever size fabric you use, so for a bigger rose, you'll use a larger piece. For a smaller rose, you'll use a shorter piece. But I always like to start with more fabric than I expect to need. I might actually wind up using it all. It's very deceiving because once you start knotting the fabric, you use quite a bit of the fabric. Now there are many ways to do this. You can just create your knots as it is, but I like to take my fabric and just fold it. Depending on the width of the fabric, I'll either fold it in thirds or in half. So if I fold it in half, I just fold it like this, but this is kind of a wide piece, so I'd like to just fold it a third and then fold that third over. And I'm not going to knot it or stitch it just yet. I'm just going to go across the entire length of the piece, creating those folds just to kind of train the fabric. And I just finger press them here. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can use an iron by all means if you'd like, if you like that nice, rich, crisp edge, but it's not necessary. This is kind of a rustic rose, and we're just trying to create um, a little guidance for our fabric, a little memory for it to take for when we actually do our stitching and our manipulation. So once I go across the length of that fabric, just pressing it down, just to give it a little memory to what we're going to use, then I can start my knotting. I like to start at the end of the fabric that I know is gonna be the center of my rose. And in this case, it's gonna be the end that doesn't have the edge. So I just take my fabric, and again, I hold it down in position where I folded it, whatever fold that is, and then I'm just gonna make a knot. And I make a large loop, feed it through, and then I guide that knot towards the end of the fabric. I want it to be right at the end with just a little piece of fabric sticking out. So there I have my first knot. And so now I know that this is a nice long piece of fabric. I'm going to knot it throughout the piece and I'm exponentially going to increase the distance as I go. And by that I mean my first knot is here very close to the edge, only about half an inch from the edge. My next knot I'm going to try and keep maybe three quarters of an inch from that previous knot. And while I'm making the knot, if my fabric unfolds, that's okay, because that adds more texture. But I like to start out by just working it into that fold that I started with in the first place. So now I'm going to create my next knot, and I'm going to eyeball it and try and go maybe an inch or so from the last knot that I put down. So I'm just getting a little larger spaced with each of my knots. And I like to really make them nice and snug. 
as I go. But the width of the knots and how tight you make them is completely up to you and it's completely subjective. So there I have my knots, four knots. And now I just wanna make a few more right here on the edges, maybe two more to finish this piece. And I can always add more if I like. So I come in here, make the knot, and then I'm gonna make my last knot here. Now, I'm not gonna trim my piece just yet. I'll trim it after I do my stitching. But now I have a piece of fabric, and it's a lot shorter than when I started, but it has all this texture to it. I have a little block here. This is just an old placemat, and it's really for my base. I cut it into a neat square so that I can use it as a square, but if I want, I can trim around where I actually stitch my rows. I also have a needle with my thread knotted, and I just chose a color that matched the rows that I wanted. So now I'm gonna start by putting the center of my rows just where I want it on my piece here. And because I'm not really sure how I'm gonna use this in the future, I'm gonna put this in the center of my block. If I knew I wanted this to be on the edge, I would move it accordingly. But I'm gonna take that flat piece of fabric, put it down on my placemat here, my little quilted piece of fabric. And the reason I chose this quilted piece of fabric is because it's substantial. You can use a piece of regular fabric, but it'll flop and flip over. So that's why I like something with a little bit of quilting or padding to it. And so I only stitch one or two stitches just to hold that beginning part of my strip here, my knotted strip in place. So I'll come up over here and make a second stitch. And that just holds it in place. I wanna keep my thread underneath my rows. And now I'm just gonna twist my base and work with my fabric here and just start to create a spiral. Now once I start wrapping around that rose and I can go as tight or as loose as I want, I'm gonna just pull my needle up from underneath coming through my fabric and this just anchors it in place. So I have my one stitch here and now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna try and go through this fabric through part of the knot and into the bottom of this piece of quilting. So it can be a little tough at times. So I have my needle and you can see it coming out here and I'll just pull it through nice and gently. And so I'm starting to anchor my rows. Now you can just spin it around just like this or you can flip it if you know there's a piece of the fabric you really want to emphasize or to show. And if you flip it, I suggest you make another stitch very soon. So I'm gonna come up here, and my goal is to try and get a stitch right on the end of that little knot. It's a little tough coming through the fabric. Just take a moment, make that happen. So that anchors it in place again. And before I make that second stitch to hold it in place, I can move it around a bit. And then I'll just anchor it down, going through the fabric I just put in, and trying to anchor it a little bit in that previous area that we've knotted down. And again, it can be a little difficult to stitch through all those layers. But once you do, it's anchored down fairly well. And with each increasing stitch, you'll get it more secure. So now I'm gonna to continue to wrap around. I'm gonna just twist as I go, playing with this fabric here to get the look that I want. So I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna make another stitch before my next knot because I'm happy with the way that's starting to look, going down through all that fabric. And then I'll show you on the back, I just have all these stitches. Again, I'll start spinning it around. And when I make that spin or that twist in my fabric, I like to come up here, come up through the fabric, pull it snug, 
reinforce that twist that I made and make that stitch go down through that twist. And if you want, you can do additional stitches. You don't have to do just the one stitch if you're feeling that it needs a little more anchoring. So I'll come back here and make another stitch. Now, because I chose this red thread and this red fabric, you don't really see the stitches. You just see all this texture that's coming across because of the knots and the twisting of the fabric. If your knots are too difficult to go through, you can come up just beside the fabric like this and just anchor back down into your knot as if you're doing a couching stitch. And that's another way to hold it in place. So I continue with my twisting and I could stop at any point when I'm happy with the size and the shape of this rose. Because I'm doing it on camera, I'm gonna to continue to get a larger rose, just so you can see the repeated motions and the steps that I go through. Now this fabric, the nice bright red, and this thread look really classic like a classic rose and it's quite lovely. So I'm very glad that I'm continuing to make it a nice large rose. I don't have an idea of how I'm gonna use it in my work just yet, but it gives me a lot of options. So now that I'm coming to the end of my fabric, if I decided that I really wanted this rose to be larger, I could just stitch this down, grab another piece of fabric and continue and you wouldn't really know that. You wouldn't know that it was multiple pieces of fabric. I'm quite happy with the way this looks. So before I do my final stitches, I wanna trim off this white part of the fabric. And now I'm just gonna come in here and make my final stitches to hold it in place, to really anchor it down. I like to do a few stitches first to anchor it down and then I can come back in and if I wanna flip up my edge, I'll come back in and flip that up. So now I have a cute little rose here. Because of the print of the fabric, I do have little leaves that show underneath and that's kind of an interesting effect as, long as, as well as this little red flower underneath. I'll knot the back with this thread because I'm no longer gonna use the red thread and then I'll just snip off the end. So now there's not very much thread here and I just wanted to point out that I'm gonna save this and in another video, I'll show you what I do with the ends of my threads. But now I have my rows. I wanted to show you how I make a leaf. Again, because I like the way this came out with the printed quilting here, that has its own leaf, I'd probably leave this if I was doing this on my own, just for my own creations. But I wanted to show you how I just do a fabric leaf, kind of like you see here, and it's a very simple procedure. You can use a piece of ribbon, you can use fabric, it doesn't really matter. I chose green because the leaves are, tend to be green, and then I just wanted to play and see which type of fabric print I wanted to use. And I'm gonna use this just simple polka dot so again, I just make a long strip of fabric because I'm not sure what length I want for my leaf and having a long strip gives me more options. I like to just fold a triangle at the top. So I'll fold it over once and fold it over again. And that's usually the top of my leaf. So then I'll take some thread that matches my fabric more or less. I don't mind if it shows my stitches. I like the way that looks, but this is just some green thread with a knot on the end. And I'll go in and come up from behind, catching all those layers. And I'll make just a few little stitches, just enough to hold it in place. I wanna hold this triangle closed. I'm not trying to make a perfect triangle here. I just want my leaf to come to a point. 
So once I have that point all stitched, I'll come around and just press my fabric in. This way, there aren't raw edges, which I don't tend to mind the raw edges anyway, but for this particular process, I like to have just a thin leaf. And now I'll just stitch a few stitches right down the center, just running stitches. I make them a little larger as I go because I like to pull this stitch when I'm done to make the fabric ruffle. So I'll do one more stitch here, and this is a very long leaf. I wouldn't use it this long. But now that I have my stitch from the top to the bottom, I'll just come in here and pull each stitch. And as you can see, it pulls the fabric and kind of ruffles it. And I like that look. So I'm going to snip this thread, the little tail of it, and now I have my leaf. And now I can decide where I want to put it. Once I have it ruffled to the point that I like, I'm going to take this thread and end my leaf. So I'll just come up here, make a stitch, and go over it one more time. And I change the direction of that stitch. I can still play around with the ruffle by just going to my stitches here and pulling them and playing with them. I'm gonna snip off a good portion of that fabric that I haven't used, and now I'll decide where I wanna put it. I decide mainly how I wanna put it by where around this rose has a little give. So right in there works out well. I'm gonna fold the leaf over on itself and make another stitch. And this is just to make it the right length that I want. I don't want it to be too long. And I make a stitch to hold that in place. And then I place it where I want it under my rows. And from there, I just stitch it down. I'll do one more stitch over here. Knot it on the back. I could play around with this leaf further by scrunching it up and then making a stitch exactly how I want it. So that's why I make the leaf much longer than I want, than I intend to use, because it gives me a lot of options to how I'm gonna play with it. So I just stitch it down in a couple of spots, not off the back, and there I have my knotted rows. So that's my process for creating that knotted fabric rose. I find it to be really interesting if I have a strip of fabric left over, I'll create a rose, I'll just spend a good 10 minutes or so stitching it down to my piece and then my stash gets built up with these elements that I can use in my stitching projects. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.